Hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to another Solution Sunday because being the soul, the grand being of light you are, is the solution to every problem. <laughs> Looking from through the eyes of our higher selves changes everything. Today we are here with my good friend Brenda Castor. She is the author of Stroke of Luck. And uh, she was on a few couple months ago when her book was released, and now we have her back again. We are going to be talking about some magic and miracles and creating a life you love. Brandy, welcome. Thank you. It's fun to be here. <laughs> yeah, you know, we talk a lot, and you know, I've really watched you go from, you know, kind of being in a state of, you know, lots of stuff going on to now really being in this state of gratitude and really appreciating your life. So how have you done that? Well, I'll tell you, um, when I got out of my way, I think things started to move. You know, I have lived a life of extreme stress, extreme stress, mm -hmm. and I just never let it go. It doesn't matter what I've done. It doesn't matter what I blah, blah, blah. You know, you can go on and on and explain, but I kept this stuff buried inside me. And I think um, my friend, Julie, is a hypnotherapist and a session with her. And it was like, it, it got me thinking. Things get me thinking. And then I had a coaching call with you and... I was talking about that and I was talking about the fact that my mom has passed away and I, my mom and I didn't get along that well. You know, I loved her. She loved me, but we were just like button heads all the time, all the time. And, but I cared for her. Um, you know, I physically, you know, paid for her stuff. You know, I made sure she was good. I made sure if anything came up, it was taken care of. And um, I had this sense of unnatural grief, you might say. It was extraordinary. And I was telling you about this and I was like, I don't know why I have this because it's so not in character with what the relationship we had. And you told me, Maybe what I should do is take everything in my personal space, my globe, as you might say, of my mother's, put it in a rose and give it back to her so she can move on and take back what she has of yours so you can move on. And I have not, since I did that, it was such a freeing and liberating experience I have not had these moments of such excessive sorrow, excessive grief that I was experiencing almost every day. I would just burst into tears, you know, just unexpectedly. So that kind of started the floodgates. <laughs> I call it the floodgates because when that happened, it was kind of miraculous. So I ended up, more stuff kept coming up. And I was like, where is this coming from? And there were people, there were places, there were incidents, there was stuff. And it was like 24 seven, 24 seven. I'd be asleep and I'd wake up with something, somebody, someplace, something. And I'd be like, get out. And I was giving people back theirs, depending on what was. I was exploding the rose and putting the light in. I was turning up my light within me all the time. Every time something would come up, I'd, I'd deal with it and I'd turn up my light. I'd go, no, I'm not taking less. I'm not. Well, you know, that's a lot of work, you know, 
to keep so you your were mind. clearing out your energetic space your personal aura you were maintaining and clearing this right for anybody i think i think i this. think the conversation that started it is because you asked me what is the ratio from light to dark in my space and immediately it was like 60 40 you said light or dark right 60 light and i'm thinking how the heck did 40 percent dark get in there I'm pretty good with trying to keep that going. And it was like, but that's how slick it is. Mm -hmm. That's how slick it is. And your thoughts, I realized you have to be so conscious of your thoughts because they are slick and they'll slide in. And I think we're just conditioned to it from years of TV or years of years of whatever. It uh, doesn't really matter. It's just we're conditioned to accept less than. Yeah, and we've never really been taught about light and dark and what the, exactly what that actually means. Right. On an energy level. And that that because we are light, when that darkness is sort of like a you know, like this inky darkness kind of starts to come into our energy field that darkness starts to impact our lives and we start to you know we feel afraid or we feel guilty or we feel ashamed but it's whatever variety of darkness has infiltrated our energy space and that's it's, what we then start creating our lives from well you know i start thinking about it because it's like wow i mean and all of a sudden you know i'm feeling lighter by the day but i'm working it i'm working it because i'm used to taking care of other people making sure other people's needs are met I uh, my whole house is filled with stuff in case someone comes over and they might need this <laughs> you know it was ridiculous i have a beautiful sewing room and that was the first thing well, you introduced me to a professional organizer because I was struggling. I had so much stuff that other people might need. It was overwhelming to me. Mm -hmm. And one of the spaces was my sewing room. And I pretty much, at most points in my life, kept one whole side of my sewing room clear in case someone wanted to come over and sew. Wow, well, so no one has come over and sewn in years. Wow. So that space kept getting filled with junk. And I was, I just didn't even know where to turn with this room. It is the most magnificent room ever now. And all my stuff is there. There's, there's no space for others. Mm -hmm. It's all for me. And I didn't even realize this until not that long ago. But every time she came and we cleared another space, I felt lighter. And in the meantime, I am purging my energy field and myself of all this stress, all this trauma. I mean, I even went to my, this is just recently, went to my chiropractors last week. We did a rescan and I was on the edge and said, I am so stressed out and I don't even know why. I was shaking, I was so stressed out. And he looked over my shoulder at the screen of my scans. He goes, yeah, I see that. <laughs> well, we're gonna, we're gonna come up with something. I said, you better. And I was like losing it. I, I was just losing it. And then I got home and I sat down and I was just like, just chill, just be quiet. And all of a sudden, I saw the image of my sewing room just down the hall. And I realized, this is just mine. This whole space is just for me. I can go in there anytime I want. It's clean. It's got everything I need. Everything has is labeled. It's I, I can find everything. Before I could not find anything, I just kept buying stuff. I was like, I'm not looking through that, you know, and I would just buy it again. 
I, I would end up with three, four, five of the same kind of rotary cutters or scissors or something. And I realized that place is a stress-free zone. And then I started looking at all the things the organizer has organized for me. The bathrooms. I, I don't have anything in there underneath the sink except toilet paper and Kleenex. It's like, I don't need anything in there. My laundry room. I gave all these cleaning supplies to my cleaning people. It's like, why do I have this? In case somebody needed it. It's the most freeing experience oh. to realize that you, that I am creating a life that I absolutely love. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying, you know, everything's like hunky dory, you know, you go up and down, but I catch myself. And I think that's the key. What am I thinking? And I look around and I go, is this the life I want? I look around at my life experience. Is this the life I want? Well, no, because I have a lot of physical things that I'm dealing with. And it's like, psh, there is no reason I have to live this life. And I started doing something that is really kind of fun is I believe there's an original blueprint for our bodies. And I visualize the blueprint over me and it's starting to sink into my skin. It's starting to become a part of me. And when I just stumble a little or can't read something or something happens, I sit down and I just visualize the blueprint and how my body is absorbing it. It's coming into its own. I'm doing the same for my cat, you know, she's, she's 18 this month and she is the most precious thing to me. And I just say, look at your little body. It's so perfect, you know? And I have to say that about myself. I used to always have words of judgment for myself. You know, it was, I was always judging myself. I was always thinking I wasn't worthwhile, that I had no worth. I had no value, blah, 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 blah. And I realize every day I, I look at myself and I go, you know, you're pretty damn beautiful inside and out. You have an amazing life. And every day I lay in bed before I get up and I think this is a day of infinite, infinite possibilities. Anything could happen. And, you know, it's like um, magic. It's really like magic because if you just let the universe, God, our source, our creator, whatever you want to call it, if you just let them work, just put out what you want. And if you just let them take care of it, they don't need your help. <laughs> they don't need your help, you know? And I sat there and when I, all of a sudden I realized my life is transforming and I didn't have to do a dang thing. It just synchronicities kept coming along with the organizer, with talking to you, meeting with Julie. There, there were just people in my life that would just show up, give me a piece of the puzzle. Now, did I get it immediately? No, but I was sitting there in the quiet and it all started hitting me. How beautiful this all flowed into my life. And it wasn't, it wasn't uh, work related. It wasn't like a, a struggle. It was just natural flow, just a natural flow. Yeah. And I would just start urging every single person to look at what's going on in their lives. And if they're not in love with it, Start listening to your thoughts, what you're saying. We say things that we don't mean. Mm, yes. We say things that we think are a joke or something, 
but you create your own reality. So if you're speaking something you don't want, you're getting it. And your and your reality explains exactly what you're thinking and what you're saying. Exactly. The so, physical stuff is the mirror of the non-physical thought space. Right. And, you know, we've just never been taught that our thoughts generate our reality, that our energy, our emotions, energy, emotion, emotion, that our thoughts and our emotions combine to generate our life circumstances. Yeah, yeah. So now, so you say it didn't take any work. It did take a little bit of work. It took your attention. It took right. you paying attention to what was going on in your energy field. And yeah. any thoughts of fear, doubt, guilt, shame, worry, all of that, you, you took action to just clear those things out. I think I think when I say it didn't take any any work on my part was the fact that when I realized what had transpired, I was sitting in a place of receiving, of love, of happiness, of joy. And it just it didn't seem like any work because it had already I'd already worked it, you know, oh. but you do you do need to be aware. And it does. I tell you, for that week, I was just I, I felt beat up. I, I mean, I felt beat up because it was boom, boom, boom. The thoughts, the emotions, the whatever uh, was hit me pretty fast, pretty hard, 24 seven. And I'm like, you had been doing a lot of clearing. So yes, as and, all of that stuff starts clearing out, like the old stuff leaves yeah. and we see it, we notice it as it's leaving. And then we go, oh my God, why are you still here? <laughs> and we start <laughs> engaging with it instead of just allowing it to let go. Yeah, it, it was fast and furious. It was more than I had ever imagined was still in there. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was crazy. It was a crazy week. And I I had no real choice but just to give, give away to it. Just let it go because there was so much. And I, maybe for me, maybe that's the only way it could have gone because, <laughs> I, I mean, you know, I like to keep things back, keep things back. And, you know, when I feel, I mean, oddly, my health journey, sometimes I feel a little bit afraid. Whoa, what will I be like if this? And I go, yeah, no, you're not doing that. <laughs> you're not doing that. And, and you know, because <clears throat> I could keep myself like this forever. Everybody can. Everybody can do what they want. They can do what you want. And <clears throat> I just... I just don't think I want this. So I foresee a lot of changes, not only continued in my whole, continued in my life here, but in my health, mm -hmm. I see some pretty spectacular changes coming my way. And I can't, I can't feel bad because I'm worth this. I'm absolutely worth this. I'm understanding that more now than ever that we all have an innate worth and we all have a job to do. We all have something we came here to do. And most importantly, I think it's to shine your light. That's to it. shine that love because love will be the answer to everything. Love is the most powerful energy in the universe. Yes. And if we can fill ourselves, not only with light, but that love, that life force energy of love within us and shine it out. There's nothing we can't do. Nothing. Exactly. You know, you and I have had similar experiences. We got there in different, different ways. Right. When I was a really little girl and I would go to bed at night, I would just be in this field of unified light and love. It was just filled with light and it was filled with unconditional love. And I knew that that was source. I knew that was, you know, heaven or God or whatever you want to call it. And 
but that's the universe and that's what is eternal and everlasting and then i could look at, at the earth and go wow they're not doing that here like they've forgotten this space yeah. but when you had your stroke you left your body for a period of time and you went to the other side and you went to the same space <laughs> yeah yeah and you know i'll tell you you can have that here Yes, you can exactly. you can connect with the creator it's here right now. Yes, it is. Exactly. The source never leaves us. No, nope. never leaves us. We are the source. Exactly. You know, and so <clears throat> you can feel that light. You can feel that love mm -hmm. all the time. Exactly. And when you're not feeling it, look at your thoughts. What are you thinking? Right. What are you saying? Yeah, we've been we've all been taught that it's better to give than to receive. And that we have to put other people first. And that if we put ourselves first, then we're selfish. That's not right. narcissistic. You know, that's a sin. It's not good. Don't do right. that. And then we suffer because we don't think that we're allowed to put ourselves first. Right. That's it. Exactly. Exactly. It's just the most amazing transformation that I've had to date. And I think there's more out there for me. And I think people just need to wake up and start looking here first. Look yes. within first. Yes. Put yourself first. Yeah. I know that sounds so counterintuitive because we have, like you say, been programmed to put others first. And trust me, I know that feeling well. I've done it my whole life. Yeah. And I'm not doing it anymore. Yeah. And yeah. I don't feel bad. I don't feel horrible if somebody wants me to do something or give them something. And I say, no, I just don't feel bad. And that's a very new experience for me. Very, very new. Because I'm used to saying, well, okay. And it didn't matter if I'm going broke. Or I can't take care of myself just as long as I could give to someone else. We're good, you know? Right. No, we're not. No, yeah. we're not. Exactly. We, you know, and I think I do more for someone when I look after myself first. There you go. Exactly. Yeah. You can't give from an empty cup. Kind of, yeah. Right. And uh, so, I, I don't know. My life has made such a dramatic turn of events over the last few weeks it's amazing to me just amazing I, I love that you know i you know i'm so sorry that you that you lost your mom and but i'm really glad that you realized about how your energy and hers were still connected and entangled people don't really understand quantum entanglement and what that really means and what it really means is that we can take on other people's energy and it feels just like our energy because we we're feeling it and like it's just like oh you know i kind of feel weird I, you know i'm not really sure why i'm not completely comfortable you know but we don't realize that anytime we're feeling uncomfortable it's because it's an energy that's not ours that's in our energy field and yeah. we exchange energy with other people all the time and especially wow. mothers and daughters we, you know we we are we for goodness sakes we were incubated inside the same body we were sharing the same body so that quantum entanglement is through the dna and when we don't realize that you know when they are gone, when somebody steps out of their body and goes back into the non-physical realms, it's like, bam, they take some of our energy with them and we've still got some of their energy. So now we're mourning their loss and we feel like our heart's been ripped out, but it's all about that energy. So when you were able to consciously gather up your mom's energy and lovingly give it back to her and 
gently gather your energy and call it back to you. It really helped both of you to move. Well, I, I really can't thank you enough for that suggestion. And when I did it, I was like, wow. And there was instant peace and I could feel the peace she had, and I could absolutely feel the peace I had. And so, you know, this may sound a little crazy, but I went through a list of people <laughs> dead and alive. Yeah. And I started doing that, yeah. giving them back theirs and taking mine back. Some people <clears throat> kept coming back and I, I had to do the rows and just evict, you know, but um, yeah. It, it was, it has been kind of amazing. And the stuff that comes up, even periodically, I'll just notice, I'll start feeling a little down, you know, a little bit depressed or something like that. And I go, wait a minute, wait a minute, what's going on here? And I can take care of it immediately. And I think that's the key is you have to be so aware until you are just an aware, and, until everything, things gone you nothing can harm you if you're aware and i think awareing being aware is a practice thing and so once you practice it's habitual exactly. it's just habitual so you don't have to think about it you don't have to work at it you don't have to do anything yeah. it's your habit to know what's going on with yourself Exactly. So. Like once you realize that you can actually cause yourself to feel good, you realize, wait a second, I don't have to walk around feeling bad all the time. I don't have to feel crappy about myself or my life. I can actually turn this all around and I have the power to do that. It, it's almost like a guilty pleasure i just go Ooh, no should guilt. I be doing this you know it's it's really amazing to feel amazing yeah it really is amazing to walk around feeling good about yourself yes about your life about things in your life and it's like i never have to feel bad about who i am for anything ever and most people think that you know, if they've got something going on in their life, um, you know, this used to be me when I was being attacked by cancer, my perception and, you know, feeling suicidal and all of that. It was like, well, I can't feel good. I don't have anything to feel good about. Like, how am I supposed to feel good when I don't have any money? I don't have my health. I don't have this. And that. I learned my lesson. I can yeah. feel good anytime i choose and it's not it's amazing how the how your body is feeling you can still have pain you can still have situations in their, your life that aren't to your liking however you can absolutely learn to feel good inside on command and when you start learning to feel good inside, despite what the external circumstances are in the moment, when you start feeling good inside, all those external circumstances start to change. They do, because I learned that when you put out something to the universe, it responds instantly. Yes. And the only reason you may not get what you've asked for is because you you get afraid or you're like, whoa, do I deserve this? Your thoughts become conflicted of what you want. So <clears throat> I'm just looking at that. And as I put things out, like the original blueprint of my body, mm -hmm. I become more and more comfortable with that because it's, beca it's not... I'm not like throwing it on and going, okay, do your thing. You know, I'm letting it sink in. Mm -hmm. I'm letting it assimilate into my body. And it's like, it makes me happy. So when I'm feeling a little bit, whatever, I just sit and I think about that and I visualize it going further and further into my skin until one day it's going to be who I am. Yes, exactly. And, you know, it's not like we have to right now, 
We have all the time in the world. There is time enough to, for everything we want to do in our lives. There is time enough. Right? Because ultimately time is an illusion. It's really It is. Not. There is no time. The only time there is is right now. Exactly. This now moment. Right. And if we don't if we don't string our now moments like popcorn on a string so that we have an entire thread of now moments that become our history and that we project out into our future, if we just keep every now moment unique and unto itself, aging doesn't really have to exist because they're literally just individual, they're, they're individual popcorn kernels of now. Yes. And we can just dissolve the string and we can just yeah. pick the kernels that we want to experience. It, it's true. It is very, very true. And I get more excited as the days go by for my life to unfold, to see what happens tomorrow, to see what happens today. You know, I wake up with a feeling of joy because there are infinite possibilities. Yeah. There are. Anything could happen. Anything could happen. And it's exciting. Exactly. I, th I think if you let it be, it could be thrilling every single day. Just yeah. surprise, surprise, surprise. And not like in a bad way, like, oh, my house just flooded. Great. You know, nothing like that. It's like, wow, look at this. A gift came or money came or this happened or that happened. I'm walking straight. I'm seeing good, you know whatever every day could be filled with gifts uh, lovely surprises if we let it yes you know we've never been taught how that that we are the generators of our own reality we've right. never been taught how the universe works we've never been taught how like why things show up and it's very clear once we start to understand about our personal energy field and this goes back to what you were talking about earlier about your the 60 40 numbers was that you know we are beings of light it's who and what we are light is the nature of who we are so that light just like the sun that light is constantly emanating forth from within right and as long as our light is shining we feel light, we feel bright, we feel radiant, like all light words, right? We feel right. happy, we feel joyful, we feel excitement and enthusiasm. Those are all products of our light. When that light starts to get shut down and starts to dim, that's the darkness, okay? Light and dark. So if when every time we get traumatized, and it, we get scolded, we get yelled at, we get um, degraded, we, you know, whatever it is, we see traumas right. and dramas around us, that all starts to shut down our light. So the darkness gets into our personal energy field, but it just feels like our energy. You know, it's like, oh, you know, I'm yeah. just like, I feel really kind of afraid. I'm afraid that this thing is going to happen. I'm afraid that that I'm going to afraid of I'm going to make a mistake. Well, there's fear that got into your energy field. None of those thoughts belong to you, but they're attached to that energy that came into your energy field. And now we just think that it's part of who we are. But it's not. We've never been taught to see the darkness. We've never been taught to see energy. We've never been taught to see our own light. So when that darkness comes in, we just keep getting more and more off balance. We start feeling worse and worse and worse about ourselves. And that darkness literally starts to shut down the flow of our light. And our light is our living life force energy right. and when that is in full flow life is amazing it really truly is and can always be but that's just what happens mm -hmm. that's exactly what happens is that a little bit comes in and it's so subtle so subtle you don't notice 
until you're like in the pits of despair and you're like, how the heck did I get here? Mm -hmm. You know, and it was subtle. It wasn't all at once, exactly. but you don't ever have to be there. Exactly. You know, I, I mean, I try every morning, every morning to just feel so grateful for my body and my cat and my house and my stuff and whatever. I just feel grateful for the life that I've created for myself because we are creator beings exactly so we create we create you can't blame anybody else for your life you just can't exactly. oh well you know back in the the day the depression did well you know yeah it did but there are some people who did really well some people who did not mm -hmm. they created that mm -hmm. based on their thought patterns so yeah. we all have an opportunity to create a beautiful life for ourselves Every single person has the exact same opportunity to do and be whoever they want to be and however they want to be. So. Yeah. You know, and at the same time, they have to be able to have access to somebody who can show them that they are the creator. Because if you've been, you know, if you've grown up in, in a situation where there's a lot of trauma and drama and, you know, really for 95% oh, of humanity, like we don't really understand that we are creating our right. lives. So we then become the victim of our life because we don't understand how we're creating things. Well, it's, I think if we have a desire, the synchronicities, we put that out, the synchronicities come. Yes. I mean, it was just a series of synchronicities that led me to your class that introduced me and you you and I together. It it's just a series of synchronicities. If you have a desire, the solution is going to present itself exactly. every single time. But you have to have a desire to have a good life. I don't think that's too much to ask. <laughs> to Why just have that it? desire, you know, that's yeah. that's all you need is that desire. And if you just say, you know, I really want to have a good life. If you just leave it there, the universe hears that and will just move heaven and earth to create the situation and drop it pretty much on your lap, the people, the places, the things. And like myself, I didn't get it until I was sitting in the quiet and realized I looked back and realized what all was going on. And gratitude filled my heart, yeah. filled my heart. That's, it's, you know, that's that, that, that quiet is so incredibly important. This very, is why, you know, there's so much chaos in the world and the constant noise, noise, noise with the TV and the radio and the music yeah. and the this and the that and the this and the that that we get so distracted so discombobulated we forget how to get quiet and we forget that we it's in the quiet that all the answers come that you can ask and receive you can just sit ask listen and receive ask and it is given is universal mm. law it is nice. I I got rid of TV a while ago, now a couple of years, and I have not missed it, not one bit. Yeah. Well, I started on the YouTube, you know, and it started with like some stuff. Oh, yeah, that'd be fun. You know, well, I wasn't feeling all that great because I'm like watching, you know, murder interrogations. And I'm like, well, what are you doing? You know, so and my feed was just filled with them, filled with them. And I'm like, I don't want this anymore. I don't want this. And I started looking for things like Dolores Cannon and Joe Dispenza and, you know, Bruce Lipton and just, you know, you on Solution Sunday. And all of a sudden my feet is just filled with that. Yeah. But even that can be noisy, you know, and there are times throughout the day I shut everything down completely. And just feel, just sit there. Sometimes I sit with my eyes closed 
and just breathe mm -hmm. and things will hit me or they may not i it you know i don't go for anything but there's such a sense of peace within you know it's like i i know it's not popular because everyone i know watches tv did you see this no did you see that nope <laughs> it's like right. not anything i care about you know and less and less those people come around and i'm okay with that too you know it's just i'm creating such a great life for myself that more is coming with people i feel people coming into my life but it's not like an urgent thing it's not like i gotta get there i just know if i look after myself the life i'm creating for myself People are going to come along that share that, share those feelings with me. And we're just going to click. Yeah. And you already have a lot of those people in your life. I do. Right? It and is proof that they're there already. Yeah, yeah, I do. And it's just amazing. It is amazing the amount of people I've come in contact with, too, that I've met in person. You know, it's a, it was online first and I've met them in person and I have no doubt at some point I'll be living near people that will go to dinner, will, you know, go to each other's houses, whatever. We'll have things in common and we'll have fun and we will just be. It's, it's just, you know, it's an amazing life and I'm so happy I stuck with this, you know, because for a while there i thought i was gonna go crazy i was like is this worth it so worth it so <laughs> worth it. you know it was like a week you know a hell week or something like a college initiation or something <laughs> but it was so worth it 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 doesn't last forever whatever you're going through does not last forever and when you get to the other side and i think Everything works out. Everything always works out. There's that. But the way it works out is perfect for who you are. I think if I had taken a slow route, yeah, we could be here from, you know, dig our way to China and back by the time I was done. And this just happened fast and furious. And that was my life before anyway. So I'm used to that. But it was, it was intense. It was pretty dang intense. I, I never will regret this. I will remember this with fondness. I, I I will I will remember the people that helped me get this um going with such gratitude, real gratitude. So Yeah. I mean we all have the ability to create beautiful lives for ourselves. Yeah. And that's really the blueprint, the divine blueprint is for us to be living in heaven on earth. But the divine blueprint has been pretty distorted on this planet for a long time as consciousness fell and we all forgot where that we are divine beings and that everything is energy. We've gotten distracted by the physical stuff around us and you know everything, all of the darkness has really pretty much been running the planet for a really long yeah. time. And, you know, now we are here. This is the great awakening, the shift of consciousness. And we're starting to remember, wait a second, we are beings of light. We are here to shine our light. We're here to live, not just survive. We're not supposed to be surviving our lives. We're right. supposed to be living them. With yeah, it, it is the great awakening. That is such a perfect analogy for this because we've been lulled to sleep yeah. and to a point where we've just it's like you're being rocked back and forth and you go to sleep and you're too tired to get up anymore mm -hmm. it, it, it wears you down it's like putting on weighted blankets you can't get up you know and it's like when you wake up it's like like you say wait a minute I don't want this. I don't want this. And I'm excited for the planet. I am excited for the planet. You know, I don't know what everybody's going to do. All I know is what I'm going to do. And 
I'm excited for myself. I'm excited for the planet. And um, I think there's going to be a lot of people bursting with joy, bursting with joy, because that creator is going to awaken the creator in us. And it, it's just, it's just awesome. What's coming for us is awesome. So, yes, you know, and, and as each one of us starts to really shine our light and we become vibrant and radiant and happy, then that starts to light other people's lights. You know, one candle can light a million others. Yeah. So it's by really taking our lives seriously and like taking our happiness seriously, recognizing that I can be happy. I can create a happy, joyful life for yeah. myself. I can't create it for somebody else, but I can create it for myself. And if I can create it for myself, I can inspire others and show them that it's possible for them too. That's that's all you can do because you can't, you, like you say, you can't do it for anyone else. I would always try. Right. But people don't, people don't, don't appreciate that. Yeah. They don't, you know, nobody yeah. wants you doing their life. They, they say that, but they don't mean it. Right. Nobody, nobody wants to be interfered with, but you can absolutely inspire others. Sad. You can absolutely say, you know, people say, what are you doing? And you're happy to share. Yeah. This is what I'm doing and this is how I did it, mm -hmm. you know, and people are going to do it or they're not, you know? It's just the way it goes, but everybody's got, everybody has this opportunity. Yeah. It's not for rich people. It's not for poor people. It's not for any particular person. Every single person has this opportunity. Yeah. You know, when we get, when we get quiet and we go within and we start asking for guidance, we start asking the better quality questions they yeah. give us the great quality answers you know we've all been taught to ask why me why is this happening to me what did i do you know why are they doing this to me but when we ask those questions we get all those answers well this is what you did wrong this is why they're doing this to you we don't really want those answers <laughs> yeah. right and they're and they're false they're false answers exactly. because because we're we're asking the dark well they're gonna tell us whatever they lie you know the dark lies that's exactly. what it is exactly yeah so you know you got to be looking for the truth looking for the love looking for the light exactly you know sitting quietly and just asking what do i need to know in order to change this is yeah. like a super powerful question and, you know, learning to ask for what we want. One of the things that I realized a couple of years ago um, is that I really didn't have any dreams. Like, I didn't have any personal dreams. I didn't know what I wanted. And I really was not clear about what I wanted to create. And it took me, it took me by surprise. It was like, wait a second, I've really never thought about my dreams or what I really want to create. Like, I don't really know. And then I realized, well, if I don't know what I want, then how am I ever going to get it? Because, and then I started to really look into that. And, you know, what do I want? And what I found out that I wanted was not things it's not stuff like I would love to have a house on the lake like that's like the the thing that mm -hmm. I want but what I really want is states of being like I yeah. want to be happy I want to be healthy wealthy wise happy I want to be surrounded by like-hearted like-souled individuals where we can really have fun or we can have great conversations and play fun games and go on adventures and like that's what I want like yeah. it's not the stuff 
that we're taught that we want. Oh, right. Buy this thing and you're going to be fabulous. You're going right. to, you know, like, no, we're not. Yeah, that, that never works out. Never, <laughs> never. It, it never does work out. You know, you see, I always used to look outside myself yeah. for the thing that would make me happy, the thing that would fix something, that would do right. something. There's and I realized there's that. nothing outside yourself. Exactly. We're there's taught. nowhere else to look. Look, but inside you know right it's like we're so, taught that there's a quick fix for all that here just take this right. little, that'll just fix it right up for you right exactly exactly well you have a headache here take this pill no i'm not taking that pill well and i said my headache will go away it always does you know so it's like you don't need anything external to yourself you just don't exactly so. You know, and and I love that analogy because I have um, there's been a, a couple of students in my class recently, you know, have been talking about head pressure, headaches and, you know, how it's been going on forever and ever and ever. And, you know, they, you know, like, oh, my gosh, I just can't get rid of it. And, blah, blah. and I said, well, have you ever just sat with it and like gone inside the headache? Have you ever just actually gone in there and looked around to see like what's actually happening? Like, can you sit with the pain? Can you go into the pain and just shine some light, give it a little bit of love? And it was, their response was like, wait, what? Like I could go in and, and not resist it? I'm like, yeah, give it a try. See what happens. Well, see what it's telling you. Exactly. Because it's probably saying something to you. You know, it's like, don't eat this anymore. You know, whatever. It's telling you something that you're doing that's creating this, you know. Exactly. It, that's that's what I look at. And I go, okay, what what are you trying to tell me? Right. It's like if we look at our bodies, like they're part of us, like they're a beloved team member rather than the enemy that right. is betraying us. If we start to turn this whole mass consciousness disease thing around that our bodies are weak and vulnerable and can't be trusted, once we turn that all around and we realize our bodies are on our side. And everything our body does is on our behalf. We can start to treat it with a little bit more love and respect. Mm -hmm. And instead of trying to stop all the symptoms and get rid of them, we can actually just embrace them and, and say, hey, body, what do you need? What are you telling me? And you know what your body's telling you pretty much 100% of the time? <laughs> your body is telling you, hey, some darkness has come into your, your space. You've got this darkness that's literally pulling your life force energy out. Look mm -hmm. over here at the where your life force energy is being drained and clear that out. Fix that. And then I will be good again because our bodies are literally telling us what's happening in our energy fields. Every time, every day. Yeah, exactly. Our bodies are our best friend. Absolutely. They will stop at nothing to keep us safe. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So the biological laws dictate that we are these beings of light that emit light all the time. And when we have a trauma and our light gets shut down, the body responds in an appropriate way and does something to let us know where that conflict is hanging in our energy field, where that right. darkness has gotten in. And when we start to realize the body's not the problem, the darkness that's gotten in 
is actually the problem. Right. When we clear that out, we get to shine our light. And it's really so simple. And beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? When we remember to shine our light, when we remember that we are beings of light, what happens when you walk into a dark room and flip on the light? It just goes away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how it is. That's really how it is. And it is simple. It's not like rocket science here. Exactly. So. And it really is, you know, have you ever taken inventory asking the audience have you ever taken inventory what percentage of light and dark do you have in your energy field don't think about it just say the answer and just notice and then whatever percentage is the darkness clear it out and it's as simple as just choosing to clear it out yeah you know if you've got darkness somewhere, if you just shine your light, it's gone. Yeah, <laughs> that's about it too. Right? It's yeah. it's pretty amazing. It's been really amazing to watch you blossom and grow <laughs> and really become masterful with your energy and the use of your light and your ability to notice any of the darkness that's been hanging out and just simply take action to clear it up thank you it's been an adventure a journey and one i would not change for the world it's i just hope that i can inspire more and more people to do the same so we can just be a world filled with light and love exactly and it really all started with your stroke something yeah. that looked like such a devastating horrible event then started this whole cascade of moving back into who you truly are remembering who you truly yeah. are yeah it's it's been a journey for sure and um i thought a couple years ago that i had taken a step backwards and i realized that was somebody knocking on my head saying hey stop stop what you're doing and that has given me this that has given me this and so i just i always have felt like i'm a lucky person no matter what happens i feel i'm a lucky person the stroke i had should have killed me i mean it should have killed me there there's like a 13 percent survival rate for a healthy person healthy and i was <laughs> far from that so the fact that i survived i felt pretty lucky the fact that i can use my hands i can walk i can drive i can see pretty lucky not everybody gets that you know so i feel pretty lucky and i feel even more lucky that my life i didn't just survive this stroke i am thriving exactly. i am thriving and i'm thriving because of people like you, people like Shannon, people like my friend Julie, who are there for me to guide me and just say, have you looked over there? Have you looked over there? It's just a matter of, of switching your perception yes. of where you're at, looking within. Stop looking out there. Look within. You know, it's just very simple things. And I am just eternally grateful for the stroke it changed my life all for the better it took me a little while to get there but it was worth every everything it was worth it just worth it so yeah, i love that i love that you say it's just a shift of perception because i remember when you weren't driving and i remember yeah. when i asked you about that and you said well i don't drive <laughs> i said really uh, within, <laughs> well it was funny because i said again. i said well i backed the car she so you drive and i'm like well you know uh just <laughs> you go so you drive and i had to finally say yeah okay i drive <laughs> you know and i drive 
I can go all around town, you know? I mean, I'm still a little bit nervous when I do it, but I drive, I drive. That's how it goes, you know? So it it's just, just that shift of perspective. That's you it. had an assumption that you couldn't and yeah. you didn't. And then all of a sudden you realized, wait a second, it's not actually true. It wasn't. Yeah. And, you know, that started me questioning a lot of other things in my life. Exactly. Well, is that true? And it's like, well, no, that's not true. That's not true either. You know, so just a lot of synchronicity <laughs> have come into my experience that just have twist, twist, twist my perception. And I'm sure more will come, you know, but it's being willing to look at something different. Yeah. And that's never been a forte of mine, I'll tell you, but I'm getting better at that. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. I love that. So your book is called Stroke of Luck, right? Is that? A Stroke of Luck, a yes. A Stroke of Luck. And mm -hmm. it is available on Amazon. Yes. Fabulous read. So a Thank you. Luck by Brenda Castor. Check it out on Amazon. We'll put the link in the show notes. So if you're watching on YouTube or listening on Connecting You to You Radio, just check the show notes and we will put the link for that in there. And Granny, it is such a pleasure to have you on the show. I love our talks. I, I enjoy you, Lisa, and thank you so very much for this opportunity. Uh, you're so welcome. So we hope you all enjoyed the show today. I am Lisa Warner. I am the author of The Simplicity of Self-Healing, now in its 10th anniversary edition, and creator of Soul Solution Sunday, because being the soul you are, the grand being of light you are, is the solution. We are here to shine our light. Brenny, thank you so much for shining your light so bright. You're such an inspiration. Thank you, Lisa. All right. Until next week, have a beautiful week. Bye for now.